You actually want me to do this? Uh, Daniel, do we want Danny, to? do you want me to do this, mate? Uh, are you sure? I want to, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Great. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Massive difference. <laughs> Crikey, that makes the factory car sound like a Dyson. This car for me is the thing that got my attention on SSR, where it all started, because it's one of the most extreme makeovers of a GT4 RS I've seen. Maybe the most extreme, yes. As you're driving in GT4 RS yourself, you know what it feels. Yes. And you also know the weakness of the car, I guess. Yes. <laughs> front so end, front understeer. Co correct. And that's what we try to get rid of. And we started, of course, with the aerodynamics. Um, which was a little bit difficult. The mm -hmm. car itself has more than 100 kilos of downforce in a 200 kph, was it mm -hmm. st standard, which yes. is quite a lot. Yeah. Um, but we needed to strengthen the front and therefore we get more downforce and then we also had to take care about the back, of course. So, but we started wow. at, the, at the front, yeah, doing a wider splitter, doing an underfloor yeah. here that is closed at, oh, the, really? at the front. Oh, Can wow, you feel yeah, it here? Yeah. yeah. And then also at the sides, we, we did the dive planes into these arrow blades at the side, yeah, so we integrated yes. them. And we went to the wind channel and we still realized that it's too little of, uh, of downforce. Okay. So we need to make extreme stuff. Um, really extreme. <laughs> we looked at our race cars, also in uh, GT3 Rs, which we are used to drive in the DTM, uh -huh. and several other cars, also the new GT3 RS has yes. it like wind going through the, the cooler, which mm -hmm. is still located here, right. and then the air going through the hood. Yeah? There's basically yeah. three advantages. Okay. The cooler sits here, and usually the air goes out here. Yes. So there's like um, back pressure, because mm -hmm. the air has to go around the corner and up here. So here's a little bit of air resistance that mm -hmm. I get rid of, because it just flows. Yeah? Yes. And then there's a second thing, that uh, it gets downforce, because you use the front uh -huh. as a wing, which is which is the main reason we did it. Yes. And then there's a third one. The cooler works better because the air goes through goes it. through lighter, easier, and you have more coolant uh, from coming from this cooler. But therefore, we need to augment the car quite a lot. That's that's <laughs> how <laughs> you could could say yes. So this is the patient. So <laughs> It's the patient, a brand new GT4 okay. RS. Everything is like when you go to the doctor, oh, right? Oh, really is. Everything is perfectly set up for you, Daniel. Thank you. Uh, Thanks, mate. So we can we can start we can start working, I guess. You actually want me to do this, uh, Daniel? Do we want? Daniel, do you want me to do this, mate? Uh, are you sure? I want to. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Great. This is so. I, I genuinely, we had this is not planned. I had no idea I was doing this. Because you can't cut yourself. What do you mean? Oh. What is that? No, you can't. Nothing happens. What do you mean? Because the blade is just going like in two directions and it's not going through, so you can't cut yourself because it's, you have, this is so smooth, so it just goes with the blade, you know? You can't, you cannot. <laughs> so everything is safe. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave that demo to you, bro. Okay. So by the way, this one, this, this part here is not a carrying part. So it's not so, load-bearing? No, okay. this is not load-bearing. If you want to like get to the original car, yes. we have this part here. And this one is just like, it's just riveted and glued to the car. So everything gets back to normal. So that is a, is a Porsche OEM this is a Porsche component. Porsche OEM component, yeah. And you order that from a yeah. Porsche code. Yeah, it's like 350 euros or something. Okay, and it's not load bearing, it's just that It's not load bearing, panel. nothing. It's just a panel and we just okay. cut into this one. So we go on this. So now comes the tricky part. This is the thing with car. Nothing happens here. I think so. Perfect. We needed to get the size wow. of the of Are you the cooler. Kidding me? Yeah, so we still have some trunk space, yeah? We've got enough room for some boxer shots but here, it's all good. Oh, yeah. ha maybe it's no <laughs> helmet, maybe it's too small. Yes. But um, yeah, I think it's very nice integrated in the car. It doesn't look like it's do you know what? Not it's actually factory. not as invasive as I thought it would be. I thought for some reason all of the front would be gone. Oh. Yeah. So we try to, to, to leave 
to leave as much room as possible. Uh -huh. And also we try to make it reversible. Okay. I don't think there's ever been a customer that wants to revert it. Sure. Never. Never. But people want to have it revertible in order to make sure that ah, just in case this car grows up to one million in value, sure. maybe I want to revert it. Yes, yeah. you can. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, you can. Okay. So well, that's this is, quite cool. This is the front axle. Yes. And then going to the rear, we put a big wing on it. It's a one piece carbon fiber wing, yeah, with a huge end plates. Okay. End plates and um, a gurney integrated, which yes. I really like, it because usually right. you have the, the gurney yes, on top. Yes, of course. But we wanted to make it a one piece carbon fiber. Brilliant. And this whole package then creates around 200 kilos of downforce at 200 kph. Crikey. So it's <coughs> like doubled. It's a yeah? big step up. One of the things that we're going to be doing today, which is highly cool, because I've not even driven this car yet. SSR just so happened to be down the road from Racing Unleashed. And announcing right now, we're going to do a sim competition together with Racing Unleashed. I'm going to set a benchmark time, which Frankly, I'm not the best sim driver, so you're in with a good chance. And the fastest time of this series will end up at the Red Bull ring in this car. Driving this car. This actual in car. In real life, this actual car. That's cool. That is so <laughs> cool. So now is the time to not only experience Racing Unleashed's very latest GT simulator, but also be in with the chance of joining us at the Red Bull ring for real laps in the actual SSR GT4 CS. Check out the link in the description below all of the info and how to enter. And then the original suspension, mm -hmm. which we wanted to change anyway, had, it yes. had to be changed on this new aerodynamic loads. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And then we went to the test rig, yeah, yes. seven poster, uh -huh. and you pulled the car down while you develop the suspension because wow. the car is pulled down by aerodynamics. Yes. Or, or, or how do you say it? Yes, it's being pushed, pressed down. Pushed yes. down to the road. Yes. And that's what we do on the dyno. We so you can simulate that on the... Well, no, it's not you even simulating, you're, you're yeah, actually, you're pulling, actually it pulling it down. And then at a certain wow. level of pulling down, mm -hmm. the suspension has to work. And that's what we did here. And this suspension is so good to drive. And still, <laughs> as, I, as I first drove it, I was like, yes. is, it, is the suspension really in? It's so comfortable. Honestly. No, no it's in. Because it's in. number two, if I, if I dare say, issue with the GT4 RS is I actually think it's too stiff, even on track. Well, when I say track, the Nürburgring, yeah. Nordschleife yeah. specifically, because it's quite yeah. a bumpy track. It's yeah. almost a wide road surface, isn't it? I think it, it suffered from inherent understeer and it didn't absorb the bumps and undulations quite as nicely as you might expect. There's a nice video from the Nordschleife where there's a GT4 RS, at mm -hmm. short before Schwedenkreuz, there's this little yes. jump and our car. Uh -huh. And when you drive the GT4S, you can hear that the wheels go through because the car is lifting. Yes. And then, yeah. Yeah. And then there's our car and it's like... Oh, wow. That's, so, that's a trick. But still, it's comfortable to drive. Sure. But I yeah, would yeah. love to drive, but today it's like today minus is seven degrees We're going to come so. back and we're going to do it. <laughs> we're going to do it. And What's we also thing? did our own rims, mm -hmm. which are similar to the original rims, but they are three and a half kilo lighters. Um, wow. They have seven spoke design, very, very thin, S uh, spokes. When you compare them to the original one, mm -hmm. they look much, yes, much. Li they look much lighter. You know what I mean. Uh -huh, and I sure. really like the looks. And it's like a track day set of wheels because it's uh, right. at a good price. A, a light wheel. I still love the looks. That's actually really cool because, on a personal note, I actually prefer the aesthetic of those wheels versus the magnesium, magnesium ones. So th obviously the Visac pack is nice to have, and magnesium is great. But the aesthetic of the standard wheel, yeah. which looks more like that, I actually prefer it. So you've kind of got the best of both worlds with that. Correct. You're not as light as in magnesium, sure. but of course, you're price-wise, you're a quarter, yes, not, sure. not even a quarter. No, so not it's, even a quarter. It's, it's quite I a might actually compromise. speak to you about that, because I've got a, a... I'm not sure if you watched the video where I put mine in the... In the gravel. Gravel. I saw it, yeah. On, when they dragged me out with <laughs> oh, the, the uh, tractor, there was a stone stuck between the caliper and the magnesium <laughs> wheel, and it scored them oh, both. Oh, no. Oh, no. Really? It's deep scoring. Like, they can't be used. I mean... I they mean, can be used as a under, table now. Exactly. It's going to be a very expensive coffee table soon. <laughs> well done, mate. That was good, man. Very good. Does the customer know that a total amateur was going to be chopping into his Porsche? <laughs> <laughs> that's our car. That's good. Oh, it's your car? Oh, it's not a customer okay, car. Okay, it's good. Car. Okay, th so. that's good news. <laughs> so that's your sort of your ducting vent, as it were. That's, that is it. Yes, that is it. And that's, the, that's also a part where the cooling radiator is going in. 
That's the original okay. part from Porsche, which right. is inside the GT4 RS. Yes. And there's the, the radiator. Uh huh. And that's the new okay. SSR part that goes right. here. That sits there, wow. And then there's the duct, everything. There's no need for any diffuser work or anything like that. But just uh, no diffuser work, no. That's all, all from Porsche. Yeah. Nothing from SSR, just a big wing. Right. Uh, we had to put uh, some carbon plates underneath the hood here mm -hmm. because there's so much pressure going onto the wing. Mm -hmm. So there's not like dents inside. Sure. You yeah. know what I mean? Yes. So, yes. And then. Of course, GT4S has a complete different intake system, so of the GT4 course, doesn't yeah. have it. Yeah. Uh, we went to KW, uh -huh. and there's the whole, like this one is not from us. Mm -hmm. This is the original one, yep. but ours is like completely made for the car with all the aerodynamics and everything. Mm. We have like different rings and everything yeah. is very different to the original one. So it's our own suspension, which is like... That's quite a development journey to go yeah. on to have someone like you KW have, develop yeah. it for you. Of course, that's but it's you, you have to with, with all the aerodynamics and everything, uh -huh. you have to do it because otherwise yeah. it everything, doesn't gel. Has to, yeah. Yeah. everything has to go together. Played a little bit on the engine, so we, we had a look okay. if we can somehow compensate the more aerodynamics, the more drag you get sure. with some more power. And we were finding some power at the, at the exhaust. Okay. And accidentally, it also got quite a nice, a nice sound. Out of it. <laughs> and we did now, this, this one has a new manifold. And um, it's, it's almost straight, I would say. Is it really? Yeah, so it's track use only, okay. but it sounds very nice. <laughs> it's got like some pops and bangs and whip cracks. It's a bonkers machine. <laughs> Dear me. Wow. That was crazy. That microphone's definitely not doing it justice. That thing is mental. <laughs> Beginning of May, 6th of May. Oh, that's, oh, that's at the Red Bull ring. At in the this. Red Bull ring. In this. So. So I hope to see Get you there. Get your sim on. And, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have, this is actually where it all started, yeah? And the yeah. development at SSR. So we started mm -hmm. as, a, as a race team, as a, mm -hmm. as a workshop, and then we started to develop our own stuff, stuff, our own packages, yes. yeah? Yeah, yeah? And um, we wanted to make the first car um, something that really stands out, where I really say this is what we are capable of doing, and we mm -hmm. want to prove that. Yeah, so this is a 992 Turbo um, SSR GT. It is limited to 10 pieces. Right. Yeah, and the okay. whole project started with a full carbon fiber underfloor. So this car is full carbon fiber from the back to the end. And it has right. an uh, adjustable diffuser at the, at the, at the end. Yeah. Okay. So which is height adjustable to shift the aerodynamics from the front axle to the rear axle. Yeah. Unreal. And then we started with the front new hood, uh -huh. which guides the air through the through the front, yeah. Yes. The cooler, it's a little bit similar to here, yeah. yeah where you guide the okay. air in here and leave it out here, and then the the dive planes as it, well. It looks like a Turbo S as Meta GT3. That's what it looks it's, like. Yeah, that's a little which bit. Is, uh, if that isn't the, the best of both worlds, I don't know what is. <laughs> that is, <laughs> that is the, the idea behind it. But it's all self-made. So the hood and the front okay. and everything is, is yes. made here, and then. We did all of the uh, carbon fiber stuff at the side. Uh -huh. And at the back, it's quite interesting. We did our um, fixed wing. We changed yeah. the, the active wing to a fixed okay. wing. Also in the front, there's no active error anymore, mm -hmm. which makes it quite light. It's 40 kilogram lighter than a mm -hmm. standard turbo. Mm -hmm. And maybe the reason why it's so light, so one of the reasons why it's so light is because we get rid of the active aerodynamics. Okay. And then that's the funny thing, because there's one topic you have it's called aerodynamic efficiency. So it means how much drag do you have mm -hmm. while you have downforce, yeah? Okay. And the coefficient out of that is the efficiency. And you want that to be very high. So low, mm -hmm. low drag. Yes. And high downforce. Yes. Yeah? And if you put this wing in a low downforce setting, mm -hmm. it has less re air resistance mm -hmm. than a standard turbo. So it's quicker wow. than a standard turbo. As well, uh, cool. so even so, you have the the, Being the fixed, fixed the yes. fixed wing, yeah, and still you have more downforce than a standard turbo, 
and then if you go full ec full error, uh -huh. yeah, you have three times the downforce of a standard turbo, wow. which is also around 200 kilograms comparable to a GT3. Yeah, and that is crazy because these these two worlds. So if you want to go autobahn full full mm -hmm. throttle, yes. you, you make it low error yes. and you go quicker than a normal turbo. <laughs> right. Or you make it high error, you go to the race track and track. you have a you have basically GT3 setup. Wow. And then we also did the same with the suspension than in the SSRCS because you have so much downforce you need to have so this thing is suspension. ballistic. I mean we even a standard turbo S is ridiculous but this must be wild. And then <laughs> talking <laughs> about the tires we did a yep. new wheel to make it half an inch wider so that we can fit oh the wow. three, okay. 325 in the back and uh, in the front we have the 265 which is normally 255 oh, that's and big we did front that end. Because we want to have the higher top speed, this okay. tire goes 340. Okay. And we did that uh -huh. because this car now has 910 horsepower. <laughs> 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 it goes, it goes uh, zero to 300 in about 17, 16 and a half seconds. What this are you is, talking uh, about? Are you serious? Yeah, this is zero to 200 in about four, four and, a half se four and a half seconds. So this is really quick, but still it's drivable. Yeah, it's, it's so comfortable to drive. It's a normal car. That's why I, we call it GT. Yeah? It's, mm -hmm. it's a Gran Turismo. You can, you can take it for holiday. You can take it out. It doesn't look too <gasps> crazy, I guess. Sure. But yeah. still it's, it's very quick, very reliable. And also you take it to the racetrack. It's not for the racetrack, for the it, racetrack yes. but but yes. still you, you take it there yeah we've been testing at the german newspaper called sport auto yes and we were i guess 1.8 seconds quicker than a standard turbo s oh that's impressive and that's, that's quite a lot if you it's a huge amount if that you know how quick amount. a normal turbo absolutely OS is, yeah. yes so incredible so what sort of do you have a ballpark in terms of the amount of weight saving versus a standard Turbo S. So this is around 40 kilos compared to st to standard Turbo S yes. because of the of the carbon and the aerodynamic yeah. uh, the active aerodynamic that, that you are missing. And we have we have 10. We want to make 10. We are mm -hmm. building the eight number eight now. Oh wow! And there are two okay. left. This one the, c uh -huh. the customer gave it for us over the winter is driven in Munich. So it's a Brilliant. it's a local customer. Wow! And it just it gets here. used. Every day, I hope. Normally. <laughs> of course, people like these have a lot of cars, so they don't use it maybe every day. But sure. uh, I, I hope he's, he, he asked me for winter tires, if it would be possible. And I said, yes, it's possible. I want to meet this guy. <laughs> he sounds a legend. <laughs> 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 a legend. <laughs> and so have you done anything? I've noticed on the brake calipers, you have SSR written. Have GTS, you done any, anything with we didn't change, and pads or anything like that? Yeah, we didn't change the calipers, but we changed the, uh, the, the pads. OK. And we changed the fluids. And we changed the lines to um, okay. steel flex, and then we also at the front axle we uh -huh. we improved the cooling. So I developed a new okay. cooling duct, yes. which sucks air from. Unfortunately, you cannot see it now, mm -hmm. but which sucks air from the underfloor yes. and puts it right into the caliper. Because we when we when we did testing with this one with mm -hmm. our former DTM driver Dennis Olsen, mm -hmm. uh, the only weak point was the front axle braking. Braking, yeah, and that was from a heat build up yeah. was it right. because it was red bull ring there's always the it's main fast, straight and then the track. uphill straight yeah and this is then maybe 20 30 kph quicker okay so the right. braking power yeah, needs yeah. to be like this and also we only sell these with carbon ceramics sure so we will not sell anything with a with that brake. amount of horsepower you wouldn't want nope. a steel brake nope. would you wow and then there's a small little detail which are, this is not Porsche anymore, but saying SSR, which was quite a lot of work because and it's it was, yeah. integrated into the into it. bumper. And so we constructed okay. it new to, to say SSR. It's, it's a lot it's of work on yeah, that. Yeah, it's a lot, a lot of, work. of work. And that only for 10 cars. So okay. we'll, will th both of these cars have spent time in the wind tunnel? Tunnel. Both of these, both both of these cars have been two times to the wind tunnel. One in original with minor changes, mm -hmm. and then with the final specs, to get to know the final specs and also something like the customer is asking he wants to drive this racetrack then I mm. have to know a setup yeah and right. there's a lot of stuff that you can change for example rake like how uh -huh. how low is it in the front how high it in the back yeah so your car the positioning of the car mm -hmm. and we want to know 
how rake affects the aerodynamics and that you only you can yes. do in simulation uh -huh. but the best way to do it is wind tunnel so we know all of that data about these cars well, spot something so green and shiny over there yeah i want to show you the workshop but we can also okay. have a quick look here yes. so this is the uh, suspension out of the ssr gt so it's a five-way adjustable suspension which we obviously developed together with the kw our partner but still, we want to have the green, our green color on okay. the on the springs. So even and your springs are on brand. Correct. Oh, I, I <laughs> so like this is basically very similar techniques mm -hmm. than in the race car. And so five way adjustable, wow. low speed, high speed, uh -huh. um, bump rebound. So this is also one reason why this car is so GT like mm -hmm. because you can change it from a very very smooth ride uh -huh. to a very firm ride when you're on the racetrack. Fabulous. So and this is one of the And reasons. these are developed, I guess, as the as the stamp would suggest, these are developed for you. Oh, not only for us, but only for SSR GT. So this will wow. only be available 10 times. So that is literally a specific set of 10 car. for that car. For that 10 cars, yeah. That's quite special. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's a lot of, it's, it's not so like a wind tunnel testing, involved. but going on the seven poster with the aerodynamic map. So yes. we map it also, like I told you, with the GT4S. You map it with a with a downforce, mm -hmm. and then you develop this kit. It's a lot of work. So, what will they have done <coughs> to make it specific to you? So there are, there are two things that you can change the mm -hmm. the spring rate, yes. uh -huh. yeah, this spring rate. So from the helper spring and the main spring, mm -hmm. and then there are ventiles inside. So how okay. the oil goes up and down. Okay. So that makes the the curve of oh. the of the suspension the suspension curve. One is affected by by mm -hmm. the spring, which is static load. Yeah, right. if, the, if the load is static, it goes to the spring. If it's okay. moving, yes. then you have it goes through the ventiles. And that you can change. So when we are developing this, we put a first prototype in. Uh -huh. We are measuring it with a, how do you say it, sinus and cosinus? Rebound. C and you measure the return. Oh, co correct. Sure. And then we yeah. say, no, this is not how it should be from uh -huh. a lot of experience we and KW have. Mm -hmm. And then we put another ventile in it. We okay. change. A bit. So we open the whole suspension, put another ventile, yes. and then when we think that we are there, we mm -hmm. drive it on the streets. Okay. And when it's not good, we go back. Okay. So and you keep tweaking, and then you lock Correct. in that profile, and they build it to spec. And then this is locked, that. and then that's it. Yes. That's quite a lot of work in that, then. Correct. And also, you <laughs> yeah. can drive it with a, a lift system. So if you have a okay. lift from Porsche, you, you use the original Porsche lift system, put it here, and it's still would still lift up still yeah, so uh, this is this is wrong this is the rear axle but, but, it but yeah sure it would it would yes. work on the front axle with the original lift system brilliant isn't it all, all the best stuff's the stuff you don't see it's yeah. <laughs> all <it's always. laughs> all right good job so we've got the michelin pilot alpine on these so that's a good job because they're about to deposit a thousand horsepower to a minus five surface you know Whoa. time and uh, of course we have uh, a big prize money compared to the size of our organization it's about 200,000 uh, Swiss francs we're giving out per year and in this uh, event alone uh, you will able to win 80,000 80,000 all right so this is it this is a pre-production brand new racing unleashed GT sim right the first one in the world first in the world and the only one okay so no pressure. So we are going to have uh, one month of challenge where everybody can take part. It's 10 laps uh -huh. only. One person, 10 laps, one try in this GT sim in a Lamborghini Huracan GT3 Evo 2 like we are running in DTM. Yeah. The winner of the challenge uh -huh. is going to come with us and with you 6th of May to okay. the Red Bull Ring to drive our SSR CS. GT4S upgrade cool package okay. on the Red Bull Ring. Yeah, so hit the link in the description below. This is going to take you to the site where you can register for that and all of the terms and conditions you'll find down there as well. So right. James, get in. Come on, let's do this. Port. Okay, here we go. This is where it gets really immersed. Hey. That's just crazy how immersive these are. Absolutely ridiculous. Anyway, that was not the lap. <laughs> oh, you blast. Come on, you go, 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 go. You get this one left. <laughs> for them it's game time and uh, of course we have a big prize money compared to the size of our organization. It's about 200,000 uh, Swiss francs we are giving out per year and in this uh, event alone 
uh, you will able to win uh, 80,000. Yeah. 80,000. Yeah, yeah. So it's a combination of the points you collected over the seasons and there are some hardcore prizes only for this for this race. Someone in this room could win 80,000. Uh, it's split between the two okay. leagues that are racing today, right. but we will giving out checks for up to 15,000 for only this race. Just this race? Yes, yes. And if the guy who is also the lead at the season, he will win another prize so he can take up, up to 30,000, one person today. Yeah. This is no joke, this man. Is this, no is, joke. this is real. This is also the reason why we do it here, because we need to be careful about cheating. So at home, there are some things, also in gaming, there are things that you can use yes, to of cheat. Course. And here, it's 100% safe. Yeah? All these things are built by us, um, uh, overseen by us, and nobody can cheat here. So how many of these drivers are looking to, for want of a better word, graduate to the real world of racing? If you ask them today, I would say everyone. Everyone. Uh, maybe you have to ask them tomorrow, how to, after the race, then you will see maybe 50%. <laughs> but um, yeah, it is uh, a way to make money for sure, but uh -huh. it's also a way to make a career and also a way to uh, become a better driver. One of, the, I, th I think, the greatest assets that you have in group is the Ascari circuit. Yes. We were there just before Christmas, and obviously it's going through a, a complete rebuild right now. Yeah. And the sim install is a big part of that. Absolutely. I mean, to have that as part of your offering from a training point of view is unbelievable. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And we want to approach the sim racers, potential racers in real life with our simulators. Of course, we want to open it up mm. for the uh, for the masses as well. But having these stories from becoming a from being a gamer, yeah. from being an esports guy, 12, 13 years old, to become a real race driver and leveraging it through our simulators, becoming more data-driven as a company and have the foundation of, okay, this guy really developed over five years, now we can put him into a real uh, simulator. And yeah. it doesn't only count for men, it's also women and everything outside in between. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. I'm excited for this. Thank race. you. It's Thanks for being here. No, no, Thanks it's a real, real yeah. pleasure. Looking forward real to pleasure. it. Yeah. If you could do it over again and you had no other commitments to anything else, what would you do differently or what might you do differently next season to help you improve? I would not do anything different. Okay. I, I, I was so committed yeah, yeah. to it and I watched Zero so many times drive laps right. over and over. Nice. And next year I will do the same because yeah. he is in the race league, he drives in mode 4. Okay. And I'm driving in mode 2 so I need to adapt quite, okay, quite a bit. So mode 4, there's very, well, there's no driver assistance in mode 4, right? So does that take off driving line, ABS, traction control? Is this all gone now? Yes. In mode 4? All gone. Wow, so it's just you? It's yes. all you? Yes. Crikey, that's wild. <laughs> Me and man. the car. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay. I have a trainer in mental state. I have a trainer, um, I'm doing boxing. Wow. Um, for my mental state and also for my physical state. And you're doing that for this series? Right. And, and do you also have a plan for nutrition and diet? Yes, I'm well? vegan. Okay, so I, you're going full in on this. Yes, I'm going full in. It's quite amazing, man. <laughs> and what's your sort of like? What's your your dream goal here? Like, do you want to translate this skill to real world racing, or are you going to go full send on esports? I'm. What, my goal is to be a real life racing oh, yeah. driver. Nice. Um, in the GT classes or yeah, bad. There and Very cool. yes, I'm giving it everything for that. I love that. That's so great. <laughs> Isn't that cool? First of all, if you've never sat in one of these things, you would be forgiven for thinking that it's it's almost a game. When you get in it, it is so far from this. These are very precise driving machines. I think the most impressive thing from my limited experience in these, frankly, when I get in one of these, I'm not fast. I think the appreciation of being having that first-hand experience and, and feeling just how difficult it is to string together not one good lap, but consistent laps. I've experienced it in isolation on my own where nothing for me is riding on it, so I didn't have that pressure. As mentioned earlier, these guys are racing for proper cash, okay? So they've got that in their head. They've got the pressure added today because it's the final. It is a deciding um, championship. It's a surprise track. While these guys are proficient drivers, 
any seat time that they can get today is valuable seat time to learn once again the very specific details of how to string together a smooth lap then you have to add on top that these guys aren't that spread out they're all fighting for the same spot of tarmac turn one particularly here at Portimao it's a bottleneck so anything can happen going into turn one and right now because these guys are so close in terms of points those that first one or two laps could be make or break for these guys the defining word here is pressure and I really think it's the one with the coolest head is going to come out on top here <laughs> he's blown away. He's, he's quite lost for words, rightly so. Congratulations, buddy. That was fantastic. Well done. Well done. I can't wait to see how this evolves because if they're at this stage, at this early stage, where are they going to be in a few years?